Yeah, now we are live. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining me in this webinar about team com uh, Teams, Microsoft Teams. Um, and especially in these times where we are all, or most of all, uh, working from home. And, and with everything that's happening, this kind of um, webinars are, are, are nice just to know what tools and what functionalities we can use to be more efficient uh, in our work and, and to just diminish that gap from going to the office and working in the office and, uh, and working from home. Okay. So uh, I will be talking today about Microsoft Teams and, and what we can do with Microsoft Teams. Uh, it will be basic functionalities. Uh, Microsoft Teams is uh, it's a very capable platform for a lot of things, uh, but we are going to be focusing on communication. And uh, who am I? I'm Imanol Nebreda, I'm a software engineer at Plain Concepts. Uh, I've been doing um, consultancies and uh, architecting solutions and developing solutions in, in Office 365 and, and SharePoint for a lot of years. And uh, I'm here talking to you today, both in my in terms of my technical expertise in, in the platform itself, and also because at Plain Concepts, um, we use um, this tool every day, and we have a strong uh, working from home policy, and we do it almost uh, every, not every day, but um, some days of the week, we, we do work from home, so, uh, in in this case, uh, for us to be isolated at home has not um, has not been so so stressful. Let's say, okay. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you will have a Q and A um, chat uh, for this webinar. But if you need help. Um, with teams with anything about Office 365. And if you have any questions that I may not answer in this webinar, you have the, the, um, the adoption at plainconcepts.com. Feel free to drop us an email with any question you may have. Okay, so what are we going to, to talk about? First of all, communication, how to um, have conversations with colleagues. Um, are we still sharing? Um, I don't see. Still the, the presentation being shown. Yeah. Okay, uh, if nobody is saying anything, I don't know. Erika, I don't see my presentation in the chat. Okay, okay, confirm. Good. Um, so, uh, yes, this is in strict direct. So, um, how to do conversations with colleagues, one-on-one -on -one chats, group chats, uh, differences between group chats and, and conversations in channels, uh, how to do voice calls, video calls, or share your screen. And also, I will be giving you some tricks and tips, or tips and tricks, whatever, uh, on, on some functionalities. Okay, then I will be talking about 
how to plan a meeting, uh, also how to collaborate in a team, what is a team, what is a channel, uh, how can we share files, how we can plan tasks and, and so on. And also um, the mobility side of, of teams, because remember Microsoft is, is pushing uh, the Office 365 platform to be anywhere, anytime, anyhow. So Teams as part of Office 365 is uh, cl cross-platform. You can access it on mobile, on the desktop, on a web browser. Okay, you don't need to install the client itself to, to be able to function in Teams. You can use it in a web browser. Um, and I will see all that at the end of the webinar. Okay, but first of all, if I go to this, some practical advice before we enter that team's uh, uh, topic. As I've said in plain concept, we have a strong work at home policy and we are used to work at home and and so we feel we are mm, we are ready to share what we do in our day to day uh, to to make this work because mm, when you go to the office uh, you, your mindset is already there in the office right but when you work from home sometimes the lines blur between what's personal what's work uh, we tend to do more work at home and that's not always good okay so um, just uh, apologies if if you have already heard of of these advices but I think they are important and we use them, as I've said, in our day-to-day -day work. Uh, so, first of all, keep your usual routine. So, um, not from, not because of being at home, don't, don't be a sloppy, <laughs> let's say, okay? So, uh, just, uh, just get ready to work as if you were going to the office basically okay um, in the end um, this, these are advices do whatever you can do whatever you need um, or do whatever you mm, feel comfortable with okay um, it's important uh, or we feel with it's important to identify and differentiate your workspace from from your home space okay both spatially physically and mentally okay um just to define those boundaries because they tend to blur right i think you you agree with me on that uh, if we do not set some routines uh, on on how to do things uh, then it's all more of the same and and we don't get as motivated to do things and and productivity in our work can can suffer because of that okay also rest and when i say rest i mean if you have to rest then don't go and, and, and clean your dishes and and so on just take a breath um, we, we also do um, some chats in, in those rest times we get a coffee as if we were in the office and we call some some uh, colleagues from the team and we talk about the day for five ten minutes while we take our coffee uh, and it's um, mentally from our mental health uh, a stress level so it's good okay um, fourth use proper tools to communicate 
in this case teams. Um, we also use sometimes WhatsApp, Telegram and so on, but they are not company tools. So for work, use corporate tools, right? And, and, and this, this can be quite controversial. Um, activate your webcam. Right? Uh, why? Because this, this comes from, from that defining the boundaries. If you activate your cam, you will take care of looking um, uh, proper. So, so you dress properly and, and not with your pajamas or, or whatever. Um, and also uh, this kind of, of changes between uh, the familiarity you have with the team. So you can be in your pajamas if you want and uh, have the welcome on. But uh, when you get to, to have those habits, the, where you are not working um, for work, you can make mistakes, right? And you can be with a shirt and, and under the table, be in your underwear. <laughs> and then you, it, as you have converted it in a habit, you are not aware of that and mistakes can happen and that doesn't look as professional. Okay, so make a habit of activating your webcam. Okay, and also for work, you need to be focused. So limit phone use, um, WhatsApp, Telegram, Instagram, and whatever. Uh, use them when you rest if you want to but uh, remove all notifications to be focused on, on your work, okay? And after work, do exercise. We tend to be sedentary, right? And uh, as right now, we are isolated at home and we tend to, to be from the chair to the sofa and, and so on, and that creates like a gravity pull, you know what I mean? Uh, so move, exercise, practice mindfulness, meditation, and that will make all this situation better. Okay. And after those advices, thank you all for listening, <laughs> staying with me. Okay, let's get into the meat. Mm. So it's important that we define our virtual presence. Um, we have our physical presence when we, were, uh, when we go to the office. What about our virtual presence? It's as important to do it and to have it correctly set, okay? For that, in Teams, what uh, you can see there with the blue arrow, okay? That's like our, yeah, virtual status, let's say. So for the status, you see that you have some statuses available and uh, those statuses will change. You can change them uh, manually. For example, uh, by default is available, but if you are busy and you can set the busy status, uh, to notify people that you are busy. They can contact you, but they must know that you are busy and you may not answer immediately. Okay. You have the do not disturb and do not disturb is special because uh, it's kind of closes off all notifications, except those that are urgent or for contacts you have set as important. Okay, always remember to uh, change that do not disturb status to available or PC or whatever, so you can get all notifications. Okay, all right. So uh, important also 
we can set a message, status message. Okay. Let me just check um, where I am. Yeah, here. So questions. Yeah, you are sharing. Yeah, thank you. Um, that status message, okay, is important uh, in in those scenarios where imagine you you are going to be away. So you set manually the status to away, but you want people to know that you will be back, I don't know, uh, tomorrow, for example. And especially if there's another person that will be um, responding to the messages you are receiving, okay, you can mention that person there, okay? And you can also uh, set, you have that check there that says show when people message me and every time if you check that every time some uh, someone writes to you in a channel conversation in a chat or whatever that message will be displayed to them okay and you can also set the timing for that message if you want it to be only for today uh, if you want it to be for a week or whatever, you can set when you want that message to be cleared out. Okay, good. Um, mm, 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 yeah. Okay, configuration for Teams. And um, this is important. And this um, is level one of configuration. And this is the, let's say, the appearance of, of teams. You have three themes to, to select from. The default one is the light theme. The dark one is the one I use. It's better for my eyes. Uh, you can also configure some, some, some functionalities if you want to uh, start teams when Windows starts or if you close Teams, but you don't want to quit the application, then you check that uh, functionality, the open application in background or on close, keep the application running. Okay. Uh, also, uh, if you want to register Teams as the main default tab for Office, for chats in Office, you can do it there also. And you can set the language. I have all my apps in English and you can set whatever language you need. If you are maybe practicing some, some other language, you can set it also. Okay. Uh, it's additional bonus. Okay. Uh, and you can also set the keyboard. In this case, for me, it's Spanish as my physical keyboard is Spanish, but you can set the, the keyboard you need. Okay. And the second, the second level of configuration is if uh, that um, presence. I mean, be mindful of how others see you. So, device settings. Always check that your devices, as, as Teams is a communication app. Okay, uh, you can write, but you can also call. And if you do not have your devices correctly set, then the experience is not as good. So always check that your audio, be it headphones, be it the uh, computer speakers or whatever is properly set, uh, set. The microphone is also properly set and you can make a test call just to check that everything is working properly. Okay, and especially the camera. So, as I've said, it's important to, to always connect the webcam, right? But this way, you can check what is seen by others. Okay, um, let, let's say that you are talking to clients and then uh, in the background, you, you are seeing whatever that you do not want to be seen by your client. Okay, so this way you can check what is seen by others. 
right? All right. So um, let's start with with functionalities we've talked about configuration. Let's see the the main functionalities of Teams. First of all, activity. Activity is mainly notifications. Uh, if anything happens in Teams that you are mentioned, uh, any message you have uh, written has been liked or there has been some reaction to it. Uh, there are company-wide messages that are important. You are uh, mentioned in a team or whatever. They will appear in the activity tab. Okay, and you will have a little red dot with the number of notifications uh, you have. Okay, and you can scroll those uh, notifications. You can see in the screen uh, that add sign is because you have been mentioned in a, in a message on in a conversation. The exclamation point is because the message has been set as important. Okay, you have the thumbs up. Uh, in that case, because your message uh, has been liked, that's a reaction. We will talk later about those. Okay, and clicking any of them will take you to the message, to the um, the message that uh, that activity comes from. Okay, right, conversations, and this is the meaty one. Uh, uh, teams, as I've repeated uh, previously, is communications app. Actually, uh, you may be more familiar with Skype, and in the foreseeable future, I, I don't remember the, the exact date, but Skype is going away and it's been replaced with Teams, right? Uh, up until recently, Teams did not have all the functionalities uh, of Skype, but right now, yeah, uh, Teams already has more functionality than Skype. And, and actually, they can be interconnected, so you can chat or have uh, conversations with uh, people from Skype, from Teams, right? You, they have been interconnected already, okay? Okay, one-to-one -one chat. Um, this is arguably the, the main feature of, of uh, Teams because you need, it's like WhatsApp, you have a conversation with someone and how do you do that in Teams, okay? These are private between the people you have in that, in that conversation, in that chat, that person and you. Nobody else sees that conversation, okay? Okay, um, uh, this, um, you have different ways of starting a one-to-one -one chat, okay? But the main, the main one is that icon that is uh, pointed with a blue arrow. Uh, from a user experience perspective, it's not the best decision to have main feature with an icon that's so small and I don't know, my, my, my site is not so good and <laughs> I have trouble looking at it, okay? But that's the main entry point to, to start a one-to-one -one chat, okay? So once you click on that icon, then you can uh, start uh, writing the name of the person you want to uh, to chat with, right? You have an autocomplete, and here I must say that only people that are in your company, in your organization, will appear here, okay? Because I've, I've found that uh, sometimes uh, I want to chat to, to somebody that's not in the company, this will not work. It may seem obvious, but here that only shows people from the company, right? So once you have the chat open, okay, that uh, icon bar 
or toolbar in the bottom of the screen will give you functionality uh, or access to, to different functionalities. Um, let me, yeah, just, just so you know the difference. By default, if you see that um, white line in the bottom of the screen, that's the default um, look and feel of a chat, just one line. Okay, but you can expand that just clicking on that A. Okay, and that gives you access to, let's say, an editor of text where you can bold or, or make cursive, so underline text or, or even highlight it, make lists and so on. In this case, in this editor, when you click enter, you only um, make an enter in the text, you do not send the message. While when it's only one line, if you click enter, you will send the message. Okay? That's important. Okay. So, more functionalities. Uh, you can uh, share links the, in, in, in this message to files that you have in OneDrive or you can upload some file that you have in your locally in your computer, right? You can also insert emoticons because only writing text is not enough and you need to, to set that uh, message in motion, let's say, yeah. You can also uh, have gifts you can also insert GIFs, animated GIFs, or memes. Okay, I must say that these functionalities can be confused by the company administrator and may not be available everywhere because they may not be considered uh, professional, let's say. Okay, but they they can be available and. Um, for us at Plain Concepts, we use them all the time because it sets the mood of, of the messages and it's quite nice. Um, and as for the memes, you can use the default ones or, and this is cool, you can modify the text of the memes and, and personalize them. And it's, I don't know, it's, um, for me it's cool. Because as I've said, uh, it sets the mood, and, and and after all, an image is worth a thousand words. So I don't know. Use them. Be creative, right? Okay, and uh, you also can add apps to to the conversations, um, be it the weather. Or, or, or the Wikipedia search or, or whatever. Whatever application is, is available for your company, you can add it here. All right. And also, this is important uh, when you are in a conversation, okay? Um, maybe not in a one to one chat, but imagine uh, you have a group chat and everybody is mm, reacting to some message. Let's say I write something and everybody is like, okay, thanks. You lose sight of the original message. Okay. And that blurs uh, the, the conversation a bit. So best practice is if you want to react to a message, use the reaction emoticons. Right, you have them there in in the screen, like the thumbs ups, the the heart for love the message, or it's funny, it's, it's a funny message, or it's um, puzzling, okay, or or it makes you feel bad. So use those icons to react to a message, and actually that reaction will appear as an activity entry for that user. Right? Okay. Also, um, 
let's say that you write a message, but uh, for whatever reason you have um, made a mistake and you want to edit it, and you can. Okay, so it's just enough to, to go to those three dots that are on the right of the icons and select it. And you can edit it, yeah, you just send it. Um, it's not enough to present it. You need to click on the arrowhead that's on the bottom of the screen. Okay. And uh, you have more actions. You can create a work item in Planner if you need to from that message. So that's good. Okay. And for me, it what's useful if you see there the first option is save this message so this scenario goes like this uh, let's say that you are talking with someone about something technical from your work and you want uh, part of that conversation a message where, where you need to have that sentence as reference for later okay and instead of to wait one month two months later trying to find that message you can using the search bar on the top okay but it's not as easy so you can set as reference with that save this message functionality okay and you can go to those save mes save messages on your icon where there's your photo okay you have there an option to to retrieve those safe messages and that's so 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 useful i cannot emphasize enough okay because in the day-to-day -day work you have thousands of messages have hundreds of conversations uh, channels and, and whatever and you need to find something special or concrete uh, in all that okay so this is so useful okay and also uh, if you have uh, different languages being spoken in a conversation okay this needs to be set up uh, by the admins and can be set up as a company-wide policy or for a user in special okay um, but you can translate those messages if you do not understand the language they are in in this case my sister wrote me something in chinese okay and that uh, gives me the opportunity to to be translated automatically by microsoft cognitive services okay and it's doing a quite good job as always the automatic translations are not 100% accurate, but it does a good job, okay? Right, so how do I talk to more than one person? This sometimes um, um, provokes some, some confusion or gets some confusion. Um, how do I do multiple conversations to multiple person uh, do i use channels do i use group chats so my basic point here is if your conversation is more um, time defined you do not want it to be as permanent use group chats if it's um, if it's uh, more permanent like let's say because you need that to be like a reference for documentation or whatever or you need to be uh, that that to be set as as yeah for everyone to access then use channels use conversations in channels okay so how do we do that we have several ways to do it uh, you can start with a one-to-one -one chat and add people to that one-to-one -one chat, right? 
And for that, you use that icon that's like two people with a plus sign. In, that's uh, with the blue arrow, okay? You click that and you start typing the name of the people you want to add to that chat, okay? And that will add them and you can start chatting with all of them at the same time, okay? And the other way is also uh, you can start with the uh, the, the, the bar in the top of the screen that's a multi-function bar you can search or you can uh, in this case you search for for person okay and that gives you the option to to talk or to chat to that person and as before you can click on the icon the writing icon that you have on the left of the bar okay you start uh, setting the, the main actor for that chat. And you can see with the blue arrow that you have another option just to expand that bar. Okay. And that gives you the option to name that group chat. Okay. And to add multiple people to that chat. Right. Okay. As for chats, written chats. That's it. That's the basic functionality. There's a lot more, but it's out of the scope of this webinar. Um, and and now let's say let's see the voice calls. And when um, writing is not enough, or, or the topic to be discussed is uh, extensive, uh, you do it better calling. It's uh, more efficient, it's faster, okay. And uh, this actually this, uh, is very useful. Um, be always mindful, and, and this is important, be always mindful of the person's status when you want to call somebody, because they may be busy, they may be uh, with do not disturb, disturb status, and um, that may be annoying for them, okay? So always, uh, my, my advice is just send them a line in the chat. Can I call you? And then you can call them, right? So, as always, you have several ways of doing this, but there's a course uh, tab, special course tab to, to call people where you can create groups of contacts you have by default speed dial favorites and suggested contacts those are yet suggested contacts are mainly people you interact uh, more with okay and that comes from from microsoft engine uh, in office 365 and you can just select a person here and, and just click on, on on the telephone icon. Oh, and this is my main preferred one because as I've said, it's better if you uh, write them before calling. Uh, can I call you? So you go to the one-on-one -on -one chat, right? And you have there with the blue arrow pointed at telephone icon. And with that, you can call them, right? And video calls welcome always connected, right? Um, you can access that video call in the same way as voice calls because the entry points are the same, just the same. Just you connect the camera or you don't, right? Um, and, and that's mainly it. So you can hear, as you see in the video, you can select people, right? You always check your image. And yes, yeah, you can see there, Maria. And we are doing a test call. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Right. So it's video call, all right. 
And as I've said, important to to be mindful of of what's behind you for the video calls, okay? And and check always uh, if what's seen by the other person is something you want to be seen, okay? Right. So during the meeting, and this is important, um, you may need to share your screen and and we will see how to share or what options we have to share, right? Okay, so during the call, I, I will do a summary and we will see the video, but during the call, you can share your screen. Even if you have multiple screens, you can choose what screen you want to share, right? And you can share documents in this case uh, I, I will start the video so you can see it okay so you can share powerpoint files not all the documents only powerpoint files right and as you see you can stop the presentation you have all the um, controls to to be or to navigate from <laughs> so series acting up okay so um, you can uh, yeah you have all the meeting uh, information you have the controls to navigate from the powerpoint and it's interesting here to say that if you set it as it um, that way People can navigate in that SharePoint, in that PowerPoint file, without disturbing what others are seeing. Okay, so imagine that I'm I'm here. It will not work in this because uh, today because it's a live event. Okay, but imagine this is a call, and I'm just presenting uh, this PowerPoint file and. As I'm going through the slides, you want to revisit some other slide because you want to, to check something or whatever. And you as an attendee of the of the call, you can do it with those PowerPoint controls. You can go back and forth and that doesn't disturb what I'm doing and what others are seeing, right? Okay. Also important to mention, only PowerPoint files can be shared this way not the office documents um, for that you can share your screen or you can uh, share the um, the app let's say that you want to share a, a word document and you share instead of going to share powerpoint file you share your app if you have the document open already okay um, right, um, I was thinking of another thing and it just went out of my mind. Yeah. Okay, it will come back, <laughs> sure. All right, um, yeah, another thing to mention here, and, and I say this sadly, um, when you are sharing a document, okay, you also have, uh, we will see later, but you have a chat and that will go in the near future, will uh, disappear. Okay. I, I will comment on that later because that's a collaborative uh, editing um, functionality. Okay. okay, so we have talked about voice calls, we have talked about video calls, and we have uh, talked about sharing and what about planning a meeting okay because it's important um, let's say that you don't use outlook um, traditionally in corporate uh, environments outlook is the main meeting creation tool okay but now in teams you can create meetings inside teams okay and for that, 
you will have a calendar tab on your left and in that calendar tab okay, you will uh, see the month or week or whatever you configure that to be displayed and you have uh, the new meeting icon option okay so let's see you can set the title right as every meeting you can um, set who is required to attend that meeting you have all also the optional people say, setting all that there on the right okay if you need a periodicity for that meeting that's repeat or not if you need that meeting to to be in a room in a location this is for offices okay you can set also the agenda for example whatever description you need to people to know you can set it there all right and also the the dates and the time for the meeting that's important <laughs> obviously and uh, you click send and that meeting is sent to to the people okay you have this scheduling assistant option there just to know the if the people you have set uh, for that meeting are available in that date and time right it's important yeah always check that also if you are booking a room for the for the meeting in this case not our situation because we are at home but be mindful when we are back in the offices okay and you need a room just check always the scheduling assistant just to see if the room is available or not okay once that meeting has been set okay uh, we can check the details of the meeting right and i'm just late <laughs> okay I, I will go quickly in that just go to the calendar check the details of the meeting and you have uh, all the details the people uh, you have the chat you can see here the chat has already or the meeting has already started and you can just notify them okay and okay uh, you have the meeting notes there that's a one note file you have the whiteboard and the whiteboard is just as, as the name says just the whiteboard when you can draw things collaboratively between all the people in the meeting right uh, how to join the same you will have um, reminders for that meeting like 15 minutes earlier before that meeting and five minutes before if you don't dismiss those notifications and you can access the meeting from there or you can go to the calendar also okay and when you uh, join a meeting always connect the camera and you can blur the background okay in the future uh, the near future you will be able to customize the background with photos imagine you set the, uh, a beach with palm trees and, and so on that will be nice okay and uh, for collaboration in teams and, and channels i will be uh, i've been i don't have uh, more than nine minutes so i will be quick if you don't understand anything or you need more information just remember that uh, email address and just send us an email okay so team team is a group of people that share a specific topic or, or work or something like that so for example team can be marketing team can be it a team can be uh, also the people working on a specific project right and then a team has channels uh, let's say that uh, you have in marketing you have um, 
uh, channel for the general channel is by default but you can create more channels you have a channel for for design you have a channel for communication and different people can um, can be in those channels because now those channels can be private so channel shares the team's uh, users so all users will be able to access all channels um, if you don't set channel as private okay who can i collaborate with so um all people all people from your organization or people you add to a, uh, to a team or if the team is public is company-wide everybody can join that team without authorization okay and what about people outside my organization yes this is configured in the tenant in the in the team's administration uh, website okay but if you can invite people to meetings in teams for example and and they actually they don't need to have a microsoft account it can be gmail or whatever so they will receive a link to that meeting and with a link browser will open and they can use the web browser to to go to that meeting and it works flawlessly in my experience at least okay i've done that and um it works okay yeah it does okay so how do i share a file in a team you can you you, you see that in the screen you will always have the the first tab is the post and that's the conversation and then you have files and you can see in the video that if you click on files okay that's library in sharepoint but that's the detail you don't need to remember and you can drag and drop files there or you can use the upload icon and you can see that there's uploading a file document okay and then uh, you also can sync that library with OneDrive to, to, to have it locally in your computer. So whenever you make a change locally in your computer or it's, a change is made in Teams, that change will be synchronized, okay? And you are seeing there that the file has been moved and you can also copy it, okay? And you can share that link with with more people right and you can check out if you check out the file you won't be able to um, edit it with more people okay important mentioning people okay in any chat any conversation you can mention people and that mention will appear for them in the activity tab right a tip and trick, uh, trick for that is when you mention people, the whole name of that person will appear in the mention, but you can delete word for word until you have maybe the name, for example. And that's, that's useful, but it's, it's good to know, but if you don't use it, you don't use it. Uh, anyway, also, you can plan uh, tasks, okay? In this case, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, in this case, you need to add a tab in your channel for for planner, and that's the the main tool we use for for tasks, at least in in plain concepts. But in the near future, um, all tasks created, uh, let's say Outlook planner um microsoft to do and so on will be unified inside teams so you will be able to see all the tasks that you have from every microsoft product there 
inside teams. That's cool. I'm just waiting for that to be available. Okay. Uh, collaboration in documents. Just quickly, if a document has been shared with you, you can click on that document in the conversation. Okay. And it will open unless it's, it has been checked out. Including at the same time, see the faces. Of the, um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so, so the question is: Is it possible to share the screen and run a PowerPoint presentation, including the animations, and at the same time see the faces of the six participants of the conference? Um, uh, I don't really know. Uh, maybe as I have multiple monitors. Yes, I'm able to do it. Uh, I will need to, to, to check with one app, with one, one screen. But uh, I will say yes, it will be possible. Okay. But uh, I, I will need to, to check it. Okay. And as I said before, that's that chat that you see on the right. Okay. Sadly, Yesterday, I received a notification from Microsoft that that chat is going to disappear. Why? I don't know. So, um, we will see what happens with that. Okay. And uh, finally, two minutes. Right. <laughs> I know it's been fast, fast, fast. But uh, Microsoft Motor with Office 365 from Teams says, anyway, anyhow and the otherwise uh, anywhere anyhow anytime okay so you have teams available in android on ios uh, via an, an iphone an ipad and so on and the functionality is almost the same as a desktop application i don't think uh, for example in the iphone the whiteboard is there in echo but uh, the, the rest is, uh, is there and it works really, really, really well. So uh, just be mindful on about how you use Teams uh, in the mobile, okay? Because uh, you maybe uh, may create a habit of using Teams as you have it in the mobile outside work hours so always be mindful of that okay and if you are running late to a meeting you always can connect with themes to that meeting and, and use your phone right okay so just quickly you have a demo environment uh, just to to check all these functionalities right uh, this video will be made available for you to check everything and uh, thank you all for for being here with me it's been my absolute pleasure and you have the the email address um, and also the twitter handle for of playing concepts just drop us an email we will help you as best as we can and and thank you thank you thank you all for being here bye Thank you.